Hello, Algebra 2 students. I'm putting up a whiteboard to show you some questions that I've been asked about the current assignment. I thought for a change I would start so you could actually see my face instead of always hearing my disembodied voice somewhere behind the whiteboard. I am still here. I am still intact. Uh, me, my voice, the whole thing. So hopefully this will clarify what the homework is asking you to do. So let's look here. I've already got the whiteboard started out a little bit. And if you look, right here is the lesson opener assignment for the day. You've got fx equals 2x minus 7, gx equals x squared plus 5, and hx equals x plus 10. I want you to add, subtract in both directions, and then compose the function. So what does that actually mean? Well. I'm not going to work the whole problems out. This is more as a way to show you how to set it up. Addition means just exactly what it says. You take the first, which is 2x minus 7, and you add it to the second, which is x squared plus 5. And you've heard me talk about SAM a lot in this class. SAM is simplify. Since we are dealing with functions and not actually solving them, simplify is the only stage we're going to do. I'm not going to finish that out for you. It's not hard to do. The x squared is going to be the first term because you always start with the highest degree, get all your other like terms together, and you're good. f minus g of x, well, same basic principle. Recall, when you subtract, subtracting the whole thing. So it distributes. You get 2x minus 7 equal, or not equals, 2x minus 7 minus a positive is a negative, and minus a positive is a negative. Get your like terms together, arrange them in the appropriate order. It's as simple as that. actually faster than using the eraser because the eraser on this lags sometimes. I don't know. The last thing it asks you to do is to compose the function. Composition of functions basically means function of a function. Whatever this is, you do it, you plug it into that. So this here goes in place of that. So you've got two times the quantity, x squared plus 5, 5. That distributes, you're going to get 2x squared plus 10. Add all your like terms together, and that's all that is, people only thing that is. The last one, which is the bonus, F compose, G compose, H. So you've got two compositions going on there. F compose, G compose, H of X which is identically the same thing as f of g of h of x. Close parentheses, close parentheses, close parentheses. And this is a case where you just start to the right. And as Beyonce said in that well-known song about composition of functions, you go to the left, to the left. You're going to plug this guy in there. Give you x plus 10 quantity squared plus 5. That is a FOIL problem, a perfect square to do this with. So you get the square of the first, double the product of the first and the last, square of the last, it has to be there. Add these guys together. I'm not going to do that for you. Add those guys together, take them up here. 
and you're going to have 2 times whatever all that stuff is, minus 7, and you are going to um, finish it up from that point. This is not horribly bad. I think perhaps part of the issue is what the heck does this mean? How does it relate to life? What 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 is it? it's very abstract. So let's consider that you have a business and you're making chairs. What I'm going to tell you now is a little bit of what you get in economics in a college class in economics, which many of you probably will take. You all should take it, really. Everyone should understand things like this. And there are three things in your making scene. Which are called the factors of production, which is a fancy word which means what you need. To make stuff. Except factors of production sounds a lot more official than what you need to make stuff. So basically anything you want to make. You are going to require raw materials. You know, if you're making something, you need to be making it out of something. You don't conjure it up out of the air. If you're making chairs, you need wood to make them out of, or metal to make them out of, or plastic, or possibly combinations of those things. So you need raw materials. And then you need labor. Somebody has got to be doing it. Even if you have an automated uh, factory production line, machines doing most of it, robots, somebody has to run the machines, turn them on, turn them off, maintenance them. Somebody has to be a janitor. Somebody has to do this. Somebody has to do that. There's labor. Can't get away from it. Last one is overhead. Just means. everything else. So the electricity that you have to use to run the machines that makes the chairs, uh, the water, some types of manufacturing processes use water to cool down things or what have you, um, the taxes and or rent paid on the factory itself, uh, anything that's not raw materials or labor is overhead. Now, any of these things could be described by a function. Maybe raw materials are described by f of x, and that's going to be equal x plus 5 plus 7, or x squared plus 3x plus 2. What is equal to is not really that big of an issue at this point. You can find, you can study it, you can say how much do I have to buy of wood or whatever. You could come up with an equation, a function that tells you how much you pay for raw materials. Then you could come up with one that tells you how much you pay for labor and another that tells you how much you pay for everything else for overhead. Well, if you add these three guys together, F plus G plus H, you know what? That tells you cost. You can add those into one big end equation or function, Tx, which is the cost which tells you how much it's going to cost you to make these chairs. And if you're going to do any kind of endeavor like this, you darn well better know how much it's going to cost you. So this is a concrete example of where you would add uh, functions. Well, under what circumstances would you subtract functions? Think about that for a second. Okay, hopefully it's obvious. So you start selling the chairs, and the books come in, revenue. You want to say, we're in the money, we're in the money, you know, you know but revenue by itself, we're going to say revenue is the function Rx. 
revenue is not all there is. You got to pay the workers. You got to buy the stuff you're making your chairs out of. You got to pay the electricity bill. You have to do all these things. So you are going to subtract cost from it. We have to use the mathematical format. We're using R minus C of X. And that gives you P, which is profit. The profit is what matters. The revenue, the only way the revenue is meaningful is insofar as it gives you the profit later. If you made one million dollars in revenue, your costs were nine hundred ninety-nine thousand nine hundred ninety-nine dollars and ninety-nine cents. And your profit would be a big fat and that is where you're basically going out of business so the profit function this revenue function came earlier from the raw materials plus the labor plus the overhead so this rip, I'm sorry, the cost, I got that wrong. Sorry about that. This cost is the result of the addition of three functions representing raw materials, labor, and overhead. So this comes from an addition. Then you put it together with the revenue or a subtraction. And that gives you your profit. And I will tell you folks, you do do these things in more advanced economics classes. It's very important. And there's not necessarily somebody back in the back office of Walmart doing this. But you better believe that at the offices of every major business, they, there is somebody doing things like that. And of course, you would actually have something that the Rx is equal to, the Cx is equal to. I'm just showing you the basic meaning of it. What does a function of a function composition mean? Well, what's happening there? You do something to a thing and then do something else to it. In other words, maybe you're manufacturing. Maybe you uh, heat something up. And then after that, you put it under pressure. Or maybe you cut something, and then after that you grind it. Uh, even if you're not actually manufacturing things. Maybe for plants. Fertilize. And then water. So basically what this is saying is maybe... You put some, maybe G, maybe equals 3X plus 5, and maybe F equals 7X. Maybe this means that may, maybe X is the mass of the, how much the object weighs. Mass and weight aren't quite the same, but we'll be loose about it here. Maybe every gram of it is heated by this much and then after you heat it you pop it back over into here and then put it under so much pressure and the second thing you're doing which is the function x is different than if you did it first you, you maybe you have to heat it first and then you have to put it under pressure because if you did it in the opposite order maybe it would melt or blow up or whatever so composition of functions means put something through one process, and then you put it through another different process. So hopefully that gives you some idea of what this actually means, or our actual applications to it. I know it seems abstract, there is some meaning to it. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. I'm back. So I hope this has been helpful to you guys. Um, I really want to urge you again. I did talk about this in the messages I put up last night, uh, and I got a few more responses back. But it's really important, I think, that we try to do a Zoom meeting as soon as we can possible uh, because the best video in the world, and I don't claim mine or that, but even if it's helpful, you still don't get a chance to ask questions. You have to go with something I've pre-recorded and put up there already, and it's just simply not the same. If we get a live meeting going on, then you can ask me questions and I can respond in real time. Now, it looks like I'm, I'm going to have to go over this and make sure I've got it working. So I don't realistically see it will be possible to do it sooner than maybe tomorrow afternoon. Not sure about that. Uh, Thursday after Thursday morning or Friday afternoon might possibly work. Maybe tomorrow morning, I'm not sure. No morning is better for some of you all. Uh, others may not be, I don't know. But I really would like to get feedback from you about this, and uh, I really would like to be able to do this. I think it would really help a whole lot. Also, some of you may know this, some of you may not, but I did post this up. There will be the snow cone drive-by thing over at Cal Thursday, 6 to 7, I believe. Uh, a drive-by teaching, I guess. And we'll all get to see each other again, even though it will be appropriately socially distanced. But once more, it's something more than just a disembodied voice you see on the Internet. And uh, I encourage everyone to come who's able to. I'll be there with my family. And all the other teachers are going to be there. It should be fun. I hope this video has been helpful to you, all of you all, and I will let you go for now. Uh, goodbye, and I will talk to you later.